when I was little boy, uh, when I started writing them, they were based on my brother, um, Donald. But now that I'm older, uh, they're based on my sons, um, because I've lost contact with my brothers. Um, and it's time to finish the story. And the reason for that is that I am losing touch with the teenagers. I can no longer get inside their heads. It's very sad. And the one I'm talking about in particular is my own son, Finn, who is now a teenager. And the most horrible thing in the world happened about six months ago. Every night up till then, I put him to bed. And as I put him in, I would say, I love you, Finn. And he would say, I love you, Dad. And I would leave with a little smile. But then, about six months ago, I said, I love you, Finn. Nothing happened. <laughs> I said, I love you, Ben. <laughs> and he said, whatever. <laughs> and my world uh, crashed around my ankles. But then, a few months ago, I got the chance to get it back, to hear those three words again. I was on a plane uh, going from Tenerife to Dublin. Uh, and on the plane, I got struck by this horrible, horrible virus. Uh, and one minute I was fine, the next minute I was semi-passed out and they were dragging me, lifting me up and dragging me to the bathroom. Uh, and Finn and my other son Sean were there watching a the movie. They didn't react, they didn't care. <laughs> so they brought me to the bathroom, they brought me back, they gave me an injection of something and oxygen. And so I'm lying there. Uh, and I thought I was going to die, I didn't know what, I still don't know what it was. Uh, and they brought me to the bathroom again and, and on the way back Finn seemed to perk up. And he stood up, and he looked at me, and he tried to get to me, but, but the stewardess said, no, you can't go over there, because it could be contagious, you can't talk to him. And he said, please, I need to talk to my dad. <laughs> and I knew, even in this state, that we had a chance here to have a moment. Because <laughs> dads are pathetic, um, we, just, we just want that, so I'm, I'm like, let him through, let him through. <laughs> I probably sounded like Darth Vader, let him through, my son. <laughs> so he came through, and I knew, I could see in his eyes, his eyes were almost brimming with tears, like, so he's going to tell me, he's going to say it again, possibly for the last time that he loves me. And he said, Dad. I said, yes. He said, Dad. I said, what? He said, Dad, my headphones aren't working. <laughs> So that was, uh, that was our last time, was our last moment. Uh, now, we are going to do, rather than me trying to explain all the Artemis Fowl books to you, uh, we are going to read through them very quickly, eight books in eight minutes. Um, it might go a bit longer than eight minutes, so uh, for legal reasons, I'm going to say eight books in uh, around eight minutes. Uh, <laughs> this, dear Mr. Culver, it was not eight minutes. Um, so to do that, uh, I've got two local guests who are going to come up, two kids who volunteered. Uh, we have Ryan and Natalie, so where's Ryan and Natalie? Can you come out please? Here they are. And I don't know what the best way to do it is, maybe put your things there. And, uh, this is a little bit like America's Got Talent, <laughs> without Simon Cowell. So what we're going to do is, eight books in eight minutes, I'm going to read me, and uh, the guys are going to read the other part. Well, you'll pick it up as you go on. Okay. Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Artemis Fowl, uh, the beginning, middle and end, starring Ryan as Artemis Fowl. Yeah. If you're going to applaud all the time, it's really going to mess up our script. <laughs> So that's, uh, and Natalie as poli Elf Police Captain Holly Short. You humans destroyed the planet and you stink. Nice. That's the attitude of the fairies to the humans. We all stink. <coughs> Did you two sign a contract? No. Okay. We need to make sure you're fine with being up here for legal reasons. Just answer <laughs> yes or no. Are you okay with photography? Video cameras. Reading long words. Being shot. With blanks. <laughs> I'm kidding, they're not blanks. <laughs> and hi, where I work. I'll take that as a yes. Anyway, I will be playing all the other parts and serving as your narrator myself. There was once a very smart Irish boy called Artemis Fowl. The square root of pi is 1.5. 
1.77245. The diameter of Pluto is 1400 miles. And the first part of the Caribbean movie is by far the best one. Ah, <laughs> he is smart. But Artemis did not use his genius for good. In fact, he turned to crime. Here we are, Artemis Fowl. <laughs> Very well done. <laughs> A future in Las Vegas, I think. <laughs> Me? No, that's what I said to the waiter. The waiter ended up being a secret contact who led him to the fairy who gave away the secrets of the fairy holy book, which led Artemis directly to me. Butler helped me capture Lolly. He could kill you a hundred different ways, though I'm sure one would be quite sufficient. I was in the middle of a secret ritual to regain my powers, with an acorn under an ancient oak tree, which is private, by the way. <sighs> and that's when Artemis kidnaps me. Typical human. And I, demand, I demanded a ransom of one metric ton of 24 karat gold. <laughs> So back to the villainess Opal Crow boy. She faked a coma inside an asylum to avoid going to prison. She was under 24 sur hour surveillance and had DNA tests done every four hours. But she managed to replace herself with an identical but brain dead clown. She lured me and Commander Root into a tunnel and then killed him and framed me for it. Don't forget she also launched a biobomb at me. Once again, I rescued you. And. But you don't know who I was because of the mind wipe in book three. What mind wipe? Oh my goodness, are you fairy? Opal then captured Holly and Artemis and threw them into a troll infested abandoned theme park. After we were rescued by Mulch and Butler, I went independent and started my own investigation firm with Mulch. Artemis had basically an emotional revelation. He realized that he shouldn't charge Holly money to save her life. In time to bring the lemur to the present, things got complicated. For instance, he ended up having to save Holly, who was captured by his younger self, and he bumped into his old enemy, Opal Cowboy, who was not old but actually younger. Young Opal escaped into the future and cast a spell on Artemis's mother. Confused, I am, and I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> All of this affected the younger Artemis' self-conscience, giving in an inexplicable fascination with fairies that sent the events of his future into motion. He created a circular timeline or time paradox. Time paradox. <laughs> Book 7, The Atlantis Complex. I was on a game with an ice cube, unveiling my, the ice cube, my invention to stop global warming. That's when his complex revealed itself to Holly and Foley, the Atlantis Complex, a psychological fairy disease with symptoms including OCD, paranoia, and split personality disorder. Poor Artemis. He accused Foley, Foley of trying to steal his invention, so I tried to mesmerize him. But we were interrupted by an attack from a mysterious spacecraft that left us st stranded on a glacier. No mode of communication, and, but and no butler either. He was in Mexico where I took him going to make sure his sister Juliet was safe. She, she is a lady wrestler. Meanwhile, Artemis' alter ego, Orion, was in full control of him, a lovable, goofy, affectionate son. I almost missed that guy. Let's hope he will not be seen again, in spite of having two personalities. I managed to say the city of it and just anyone in it. And do I get a thank you? No, I don't. Okay, the last guardian. My nemesis Opal is back and she has a devious plan that is playing the whole world and more importantly, my home and family in terror. Her plan is to- Oh, hold on there, Artemis. We're not going to give the last book away. We need to boost book sales. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to leave it there. Thank you, everyone. The end. The Little Brothers, Miles and Beckett. And they're both based on my sons. Uh, Miles is uh, very like Artemis. He's very studious and clever. And then Beckett uh, is very like my other son, Finn, who I told you about, who's the, who's the guy who uh, his headphones were not working. Uh, how tragic for him. The thing is, the thing is about teenagers, and if you have a teenager, you will know this, they will swap you their whole family, they would swap you gladly for some hair gel because that <laughs> is their focus in life. My son is far more worried about his hair and he goes, he walks around like this all the time, <laughs> trying to do his little beaver, every reflective surface. He's, he looks like a horse that's been shot in the back. <laughs> uh, 
and he doesn't want to talk to me anymore because I have disappointed him by bringing him to life, apparently. <laughs> I'm breathing near him. He doesn't like that. That's, that's understandable. If I'm there, I'm breathing. It's embarrassing to him to have to. But I found a way to avenge myself on a teenager. If you have a teenager, this always works. This and it's fantastic because you can claim total innocence. You say, "What are you talking about? I don't. I didn't do anything." So what you do is you find a song that he loves, and then when he's in the company of his friends. You say, oh my God, Kanye West, I love him. <laughs> that will ruin the song for him forever. <laughs> you can no longer listen to Kanye West. I have so far taken away 50 cent. I've also said, I like that fella, 50 cent. He said, it's Fiddy. What are you saying? <laughs> no, I can never listen to him again. Uh, so that's just a little bit of free advice for you. And uh, the other one, uh, son is Sean, and he's, uh, I based, uh, Miles on him is a very smart one because he can find his way around any rule. Whatever you give to him, you have to be so specific. So if you if you're not totally specific, he will find a way around. So I would say to him, Sean, stand. If we're at some republic, I would say stand on that tile. And he says, Why have we got to stand on? I said, Just stay on the tile. That tile, the black one. Stand on the tile. Why do I have to stand that tile? Because if I, if I don't tell you to stand on that tile, you'll start punching your brother. So just stand. <laughs> he said, so I have to stay on this tile. I said, yes. He said, what happens? What happens if an axe murderer comes in here? <laughs> do you want me to stay on the tile? Is that what you want me to tell? What's, is that what you're going to tell mommy when you go home with my head in a bag? But I'm dead because you said I had to stay on the tile. <laughs> What if all the cisterns burst in this public lavatory and the water level starts to rise, rise and there's a little cat over there? Do I want to save the cat from drowning or should I just stand on high? And I said, shut your face. And stand on the tile. I remember once we were going, we went big into the bathroom. This is where this happened actually. Uh, I brought him. There's one job that the dad has to do in the family that the mother cannot do. Only one job. And it's very important that we get that job done properly or else our whole... <laughs> you just took that, you know, the big trash cans, you put it over his head, you run. I don't know who that kid is. <laughs> So we're out in the uh, we're out in the shopping centre and Sean says to me, P P. I said, okay. Was that two one P's or one double P? <laughs> he said P P. I said yes. What? Keep a pause. If you give us two P's, say it quickly. If it's what you want, say. He said it's P P P now. <laughs> I said okay, okay, let's go. Okay, I can do this. I can do this. And my son Finn was saying, no, you can't do it. You're <laughs> We're going to mess it up and I'm going to get a photo of you messing it up. It's going to be up on Facebook. And five seconds after you screw up, it's on Facebook. <laughs> so we went along. Now you girls are probably thinking, what's your problem? You go into a public bathroom. It's lovely. It smells like lemon. Everything is fantastic. There's no rust on the pipe. What's your problem? If you've never been in the male bathroom. In the male bathroom, there's a weird miasma of fog that you don't know exactly what it is. You can't see yourself in the mirror. You could wipe the mirror, but not with my clothes. So I brought him in, and oh my God, it's a beautiful...